You're listening to Talk Israel with Anya Farber, where we talk everything Israel. The art, the culture, the music, the food. Oh man, don't get me started on the food. So grab a plate of shakshuka, sit down and listen up. And now your host, Anya Farber. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Talk Israel at our new time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, today I am very excited because we are talking about music. And I love music. I do love music. And we are welcoming one of the most interesting people I have yet encountered through my tour of Israel's music, Mr. Or Georgie, the man who yeah. really needs no introduction, Or Georgie. No, no. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you. I really need no introduction because uh, you know when you introduce someone, you introduce them, and I need no introduction. <laughs> Yeah, let, let's drop that heavy accent. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, so this, oh, oh my goodness! Wait, um, could could you could you just go back for a second? Uh, did you just that that voice? It's so familiar. So for our listeners who are like, wait a minute, wait a minute, mm-hmm. that accent and that voice sounds familiar. No, guys, it's not James Earl Jones. I know. Luke, it is your father. No, it's Or Georgie. Or you you were kind enough to record my introduction. So uh Indeed. that accent uh that we just heard for a second, that that's really how you sound, huh? What what's up with that? Uh, no no no, that's the the fake heavy Israeli accent that I can do. Uh but it's not like how I normally talk. But if you want, we can do the rest of the interview like this, you know, the, the more uh, comically Israeli uh, accent you can do when everything <laughs> has that sound, you know. When I talk to you like this, this is a very Israeli sounding voice. But n- no, but uh, I usually don't talk like that. Yeah, um, but... Um... You know, I we <laughs> we sh- we will definitely talk about your music. But now that people are getting a little glimpse into your personality, and boy, do you have a personality! I I feel like I feel like we should talk about that first time that I met you when researching for my "Do You See What I See" project, and we were introduced uh, by actually one of last week's guests. Ellie Bismot, who is a producer, and I know that you have worked with Ellie on several occasions yeah. and performed with I Ellie. Know. Yeah, and we can definitely, definitely get we we will definitely get into some of those songs because I know the listeners are going to want to hear them. But I was thinking that I feel like that story should kind of be told. So it was it was a day. I mean, that was one of these days. It was raining. Like, I don't know how you guys describe that kind of rain in Israel. I mean, they have all these weird, like, expressions and idioms in, in English. Like, oh, it's raining cats and dogs. It wasn't even that. It was, like, raining up and down, sideways, diagonally. The wind was going. The thunder, the lightning. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I've never kind of been out in weather like this in, in that climate. And I had not experienced that part of, like, the winter that sometimes happens in Israel. And, you know, we were, it's very violent. it was, yeah, thank you. It was a violent rain. It was angry, angry rain. And, um, yeah. I remember, you, yeah, you call and you're like, we're looking for parking and it's pouring rain. I'm like, take your time. I have to change my clothes <laughs> because I had gotten soaked just like walking, um, I think from wherever I got off at the bus or whatever, just to the hotel. And I, uh, I want to officially thank the um, the hotel for that, and we, we will definitely talk a little bit about that great hotel. Um, you know, when when we have a minute, it was part of the Brown Hotels. They were very kind because um, they have a very cool um, lobby bar slash yeah, hangout. They, they gave us, they gave us a cup of tea, which was yes. so, so <laughs> needed. Necessary. Yeah. It was so needed in that desperate situation, that violent, violent rain. You know, an umbrella can't really protect you with the rain coming at you sideways. No, you know? 
it would not have, and I and I didn't even have one. Um, but it was fine because I think it would have done that whole like you know no, and the umbrella turns out and everything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You, the umbrella turns into gold. Yeah. <laughs> you walk in with Yam, who is another producer that you've worked with, and you start talking to me in this heavy, heavy Israeli accent, and we had really never met. We had talked briefly to set up the time to meet. And I had no idea, you know, really that you, <laughs> this is like all part of your <laughs> funny, funny personality and that you love joking around and telling jokes and you're talking scheming. to me. Call it, call, it, call it as it is. I like scheming. Scheming. Please. Okay. You, scheming. Yeah. Scheming. Okay. So <laughs> as you're scheming <laughs> away and, um, you know, we are, <laughs> we're sitting down. I'm sure that my face, I don't have a great poker face. Um, I think you must have started to feel bad because the look on my face was probably like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm going to have to, like, subtitle and then translate everything he's saying because <laughs> people are going to be like, yeah. what? And then you just snapped back into the, you're like, oh, yeah, I was just kidding. I don't really sound like that. <laughs> You're like, unless of course you want me to do the whole interview like this, and I was like, no, no, it's it's probably better that people can. Well, I, I still think it would have made for an authentic experience. I mean, listen, if you want to, you know, flip in and out of it while we're while we're talking to our talk Israel listeners, that's that is your prerogative, my friend. Um, but but I. <laughs> I, I will say that if if our listeners are not laughing during this broadcast, I would be concerned because I have a feeling you have got, you know, jokes for days planned for this occasion. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I might have a few things prepared, but uh, uh, yeah, I am going to wing it. <laughs> okay. Well, see. I, 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 I am going to wing it, but it, it is what it is. Okay. Well, speaking of winging it, I feel like you're definitely not winging it with your career, sir, because I know that, you know, you didn't necessarily just start off, you know, saying like, I am going to make a career of this. Am I, am I correct in this? I mean, I know that we, you provided me with some info and, and for the listeners, we do have a bio up there. You know, and that you kind of started in 2016, and it was like, it was fun. It was something to do, a hobby, a way to spend time with friends. But in 2020, I don't know if you were just like, oh, I'm, I'm good at this, or wow, I really enjoy this. I mean, because you are very good, and I know that I enjoy, you know, <laughs> your music. But you, you really got serious. And, you know, I know that um, one of the, the, the wonderful things that I, I was very lucky uh, when I was in Israel in December, you know, and after we sat down uh, for that chat, I don't remember if it was like a couple of days later, but um, Ellie had reached out to me and said, oh, well, you know, there's a practice for one of the BOLA performances that you guys were doing. Yeah, we did a big show with uh, a lot of other Israeli rappers, and uh, you did join one of the rehearsals which uh, turned out as a pretty fine idea because it was a good experience. Yeah, uh, it was. It was awesome to hear you guys all live. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit about BOLA. And um, just so our listeners know, they can log on to my social media. There is that clip. I don't know if you remember this, but I went live <laughs> and then left it up because at one point you guys were all going through your songs and I got so, so excited and it was just, it was really cool to see you guys supporting each other. But, um, yes. you know, can you, yes. can you tell our listeners here on CRS radio, because we are the knowledge network um, on talk Israel, our program, could you kind of explain what this BOLA, you know, what it is and kind of like, what, what, what does that mean? Like, what is this? You said all these other Israeli rappers. So could you talk to us about that a little bit? Okay, so the BOLA is this sort of communal initiative that we have in Israel. Uh, it's going down every Wednesday in this place, in this bar called the, the Lincoln 19 uh, Street. It's on Lincoln 19 Street, and it's called Lincoln 19. And uh, the BOLA is this hip-hop line that a few of us have started 
led by this guy named uh, Soma that you met him. He's a very nice person yeah. and a, a beautiful, beautiful oh man. Oh my God, I can't uh, believe you're going there. I'm uh, sorry, I have yeah, to interrupt you for a, a minute. Very handsome man. Okay, <laughs> I need to, I need to, I, I'm sorry, listeners, I don't mean to interrupt or, but I have to. I need to say this for the record. <laughs> I spoke to almost every rapper there that night, and they're all like, look at Soma. Look at him. He's beautiful. Yes. He is Soma such a, a good-looking Soma man. A good man is, is – it's, it's – it's, it's Soma, is he listening? Or is he listening? Because you – someone someone, please call Soma and tell him because his head is going to explode. I Does he know that you guys all say this about – and hand to God, everyone, I would not lie to you. Every single one of them, they all say to me, did you see Soma? He is a beautiful man. I was like, oh, my God, do you guys all have a crush on him? And if you do, that's cool. But, like, damn, wow, you guys. A, a few of us, okay, Soma included, uh, we had this place, and we went there, and we rapped there. We freestyled. We practiced, like, already written or prepared material and stuff. But, you know, uh, eventually we understood that uh, people, okay, rappers, young rappers, more experienced rappers, they need a place to go to vent. They need a place to go to practice. They need a place to go to socialize and meet, and meet other artists, uh, whether it's musical producers or other rappers. So this Bola line, Bola meaning come to the, and every night there's a live show, there's a free live show, and another rapper is performing, and after this rapper's like, performance is done, after the show is done, and there's this open mic night until the, the, until like the very late hours of the night, and everyone who wants to come and sit on the mic, uh, they can do it. Either it's verses or freestyles, and I've seen I, I've seen people who do this, who are in this business for years, like grabbing a microphone, and I've seen people which it was their first time on stage grabbing the microphone, and it's all such a a, a, a community like vibe with the the way we push each other uh, to be better, and everything is it's you you. You don't feel people being competitive there, mm -hmm. you know. You you want other people to go and do their best and uh, become better from week to week because the the overall night, the overall experience, it's it's getting better for the whole of us. So this is a, a pretty nice initiative that I feel very proud to take a, a part of, you know. And about you saying that I don't wing it about with, with my music, you couldn't be more right because. I am dead serious when it comes to my career. And when I decided to take this thing to the next level, there's been no joking and no breaks and no, like, shortcuts and no nothing. You know, we, we can do stuff the funny way and, uh, like, have fun al along the way, definitely. But I am dead serious about my work and about the things that I do and about my music and my whole creative process and stuff. Uh, so... It's definitely accurate on that uh, observation. Well, I feel like that is like the perfect way to transition into one of the songs that you've worked on in, in a very committed way. And um, it is my favorite song. But before we do that, I just wanted to say that it is a really nice thing to see this idea of community. And, and I wanted to, to, to kind of get your take on this because, you know, after all, we are on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. So here at Talk Israel, we, we want to give you knowledge. So I, I think that this sense of community, and this is there's like a misunderstanding or um, people don't really know, or maybe because they haven't experienced Israelis, right? Now, Israelis, mm -hmm. you know, Israel is a very fast-paced situation, right? I mean, yeah. But there is this sense of community, and, you know, I've told the listeners before about, you know, um, of the many times that I've done things or ended up like, oh, gosh, I really need help. Before I can even think to ask for help, people offer me help. And I'm like, how did you, like, you know, 
They're like, oh, you just look like you need help. Are you lost? You know, and they ask me in Hebrew. And then, of course, I'm trying to, like, decide, do I admit that I'm lost? Or the time where I, I, my cell phone died, like, do I admit that I'm so silly and, like, didn't think to plan ahead to, you know, have a charger or a cord or anything? And then, you know, when I'm not saying anything, they're like, and then they switch to English. Oh, do you need me to speak English? And I'm like, back in Hebrew, like, no, I need lots of hot. You know, is that like, okay, so what I just said for my other listeners, no, I don't, I don't need that. Realize that I have to admit, you no, know, I do need help. <laughs> you know, but there is this, this yeah. supportive sense. What do you, I think that it's beautiful that it carries into the, the music industry, at least for, from what you're experiencing. But, you know, do you have anything that you'd want to share about living in Israel and having lived in Israel, you know? Well, I was born in Israel. I've been uh, living in Israel my entire life. And it's through what you say about the the community here, because people in Israel, they a lot of them uh, have a very strong sense of community. Mm-hmm. And this, this sort of obligation to assist another person. Now, people here are fast-paced and they're pretty emotional. You know, so mm. people here tend to take things to heart, yeah. uh, whether it's in a bad way or in a good way. Uh, it is very likely to offend someone here accidentally without even knowing it, and that situation escalating without you even understanding what's going on. But it is also very likely to encounter someone you don't know who wants to help you just because they can. Yeah. You know, there's a very strong sense of community, of helping each other for a greater cause. And this is something you can only get in a smaller country. And Israel is a smaller country, and you can sense it everywhere you go. You can see it. You know, with everything we do, with our whole culture and technology and stuff, we are still a pretty young and inexperienced and small country. And people here need to stick together for this thing to, to work. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, then it's just not going to work. You know, Israel is under constant uh, threat. And we can't have trouble from within the house yeah. uh, alongside troubles from outside. Right. So I think most people here get it. Yeah. I mean, and Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. So you guys are surrounded by countries who are not super excited about you. And um, the only democracy. So, you know, you, you, you can be upset with each other and you can be upset, upset with things, but without getting political, you know, that I think that's the beautiful thing about Israel. And I kind of like, um, I think if someone wants to kind of get the whole feeling of that, all they have to do is watch the Israeli news and it cracks me up because they're just, they're just talking over each other. And when I, I think I told you. This, people here, yeah. Yeah. They people just, don't know how to talk to each other. No, but it's, well, it's, 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 it's like, there's no, you know, here in the U S everyone's like, whether they're a real polite or fake polite or whatever it is, like you don't, you don't have newscasters talking over each other. And when that happens during our political debates, people are like, Oh my gosh, they're not following the rules. Oh my gosh. They're not, you know, and I always think it's so funny because you're like, uh, no, rich. it's just whoever's the loudest wins. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's how it is in yeah, Israel. Yeah. Right. You just keep talking and talking. The loudest. Just exactly. Exactly. But, yeah. But there is still is, and it's not a it's not a sense of disrespect in the slightest. And I don't want people to be, you know, misinformed with that. And I'm wondering, do you feel as someone who's who's experienced this because you um, obviously are finished with this part of your life? But Israel is a, is a country that has mandatory service, not just for men. Low the rock gather, gam isha. So not just the men, the women. And I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. That might that might be a part of it, but I don't think it's everything. Like, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, mandatory service in Israel uh, for those of, of the listeners who don't know, when you're 18 and you're done with high school, uh, you are get drafted into the Israeli army, and there are certain, uh, I'd say, alternatives to military service in Israel. Mm -hmm. You can do like a national service in which you take part in other stuff uh, that is not army related, like, you know, you volunteer in hospitals or other stuff. But this phase, this uh, hurdle that every teenager in Israel, that every young person in Israel must go over, whether they are male or female, uh, 
not, not, it doesn't even matter where you're from in Israel. You can be from central Israel near Tel Aviv. You can be from like uh, up north or down south. But you are uh, doing this thing after your high school yeah. in which you take part in something bigger than yourself and you contribute to your country. And I think this is something that helps a lot of Israelis mature faster, mm. you know, because you are maturing faster. If you are in the army, you are most likely uh, 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 about to hold a gun and be responsible to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe even participate in military like activities that are dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't be a child around those places. You, you just can't. So the army does speed up the whole maturing process. Mm -hmm. And after you're done with your three years of service, if you're a man or two years uh, and four months if you're a woman, mm -hmm. uh, you are, you know, you're free to do whatever you want. You can go to the university, you can go on a trip, you can find a job, but you are, you, you've just finished this very intense thing, this very intense mm -hmm. program in which you are just one in a thousand of other soldiers and you are all operating to contribute to this thing that is larger than you are. Yeah. And it, it does help for this perception of you being a part of something bigger because it's not just you. You're not living alone, doing whatever you want. You mm. need to do this because you are legally obligated to do it. And everyone is. Yeah. Well, you know, mo most people... Right, obviously, if you can't serve for a, a specific, you know, physical or, or whatever reason, there are those other alternatives that you talked about. Um, but there is yeah. this obligation of service of some sort, which I, I think is... Um, I, I, I'm very envious of, of the structure. And, and I will say that, um, you know, for our listeners, um, if they're interested, you know, they can check out IDF.org for Israeli Defense Force. They post a lot of great information. And... Um, you know, there's a lot of very strong women who are serving. In the, and we say the Israeli army, but they also have all the different kinds of branches, much like if people are familiar with the, you know, the U.S. Army, you know, the army, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, excuse me, the Air and Space Force. That's what's called now in the U.S., Air and Space Force. Um, you know, but people are, you know, they're, they are specializing. And, you know, you have the pilots and you have all these, you know, all these other branches in the Navy. And, and yes, Israel has a Navy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've heard it here first on Talk Israel on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. There, there are a lot of things, um, but I do think that that kind of it almost like on a you know on a smaller scale is is how you guys interact at you know with the bola and everything. And um, I did I did go to that club, the Lincoln 19 Club. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a big large picture of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> The, the and, place itself, I, I think it was funded by the, his relatives or something. Oh, we'll have it's, to check uh, that out. Or if someone's wondering, the, the they can. Itself has history, yeah. yeah, so if you guys want to know more about Lincoln 19 or the BOLA, or where can people reach you on your social media? Well, the BOLA itself, the, the club, the, the hip hop line itself has its own Instagram, so you can find it on BOLA 19 rap. And, uh, you know, me, you can find me on my Instagram, uh, which is, which is o Jordi, o -R underscore G -O -R -G -I. Okay. Um, and yeah. ladies and gentlemen, he is linked to my social media. So if you forget what he's saying, um, you can just go ahead and, you know, click on me and DM me and I will absolutely direct you guys to him. So speaking of how we met, we, we met through Ellie Bismot, who was one of the first people in the music industry that I met when I started doing all my research. And I thought, it's interesting because you, you brought this up where you are a very small country. Israel is a very small country, geographically speaking. There are, mm -hmm. there is so much diversity though within the country of Israel. And I think that is one of the things that also is influencing the music. And, um, you know, definitely. It, to, to just kind of before, you know, as we introduce this song between you and Ellie and, you know, you and Ellie come from different backgrounds and you are living um, while you're both li li living in what's considered central Israel. Ellie is in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, and you are in, are we saying where, where we live? 
Oh, yeah, we are saying where we live. It's, yeah. uh, it's there. He's, uh, you're on Petatikva, which is, you know, closer to Tel Aviv than to Jerusalem, yeah. but still in central Israel. So, you know, and, and Israel within itself has all these different identities. The north is so different from the south, which is still different from the central area. And Jerusalem is different from Tel Aviv. And, like, there's so much diversity within you know, ge- and, ge- and geographically, too, like, there's, you know, there's, there's mountains and there's hills and then there's incredibly flat area. Yeah. And the the south it's is so much. To give it up to Israel for cramming a lot of different. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Golf, golf clap for Israel. <laughs> for, yeah, what would you say? Cramming? You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Cramming. <laughs> we have we have we have deserts, we have snowy mountains, we have we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff in a very, very small space. Like Israel itself, the entire country is smaller than most like US states, you know? That is true. So, that is true. It is bigger than Rhode Island. You know, um well, for us. Yes. <laughs> Kudos again. Kudos again. Um, yeah, there yeah. is, there is How something. How do you like us now? How do you like them apples, Rhode Island? Oh, oh, excuse me, or look at you with all of this English, like, slang. How do you like them apples? All right, all right. Yeah, you guys heard yeah, it here yeah, first yeah. on Talk Israel on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. We're about to drop some knowledge on our listeners. I'm going to play them this song that you and Ellie have, and what I think Okay, it's my favorite song for a multitude of reasons. I just love how you um, are, are just every everything that you're saying and how you're saying it. And then Ellie comes in and, you know, you're rapping and he starts to sing. So in addition to being a producer, he also sings. And, and it just happens to be my favorite song. And I remember saying to you um, when when I was, you know, getting ready to, to talk to you, for this, I said, "Oh, you know, it's my favorite song. I just love the chorus that Ellie sings." And you said, "Thank you. I wrote it." Yeah, you go. Well, <laughs> it's good to know because I wrote it. And I was like, "Okay, modest much? All right." Um. So on that note, Thanks. I want them to hear it, and then and then maybe you could explain a little bit. Would you like to explain before or after? How would you feel it's better for the listeners to hear uh, the song? Let's, let's, let's listen after? to the song. All right, here we go. So we're gonna we're gonna let everybody hear this. נאחז ברעיון שנהפך לזיכרון של מה זה חופש אמיתי וזה נראה לי שכבר אי אפשר לחזור אל הימים של פעם חוסר דאגות הפך מהר לחוסר טעם קרא לאיזה קסם של תקופה או אשליה יפה טיפשות שמביאה איתה ברכה והעולם בדיחה oh, רק עוד שחטה אחרונה, רק עוד שתי דקות הם לא רוצים להתעורר, הם רוצים לחיות רק עוד רגע אחרון, רק עוד טעימה רק עוד כוס, רק עוד שוט, רק עוד לגימה כשהשמש יורדת הם מתחילים לצאת עוד אחד דברים רוקדים למעלה רוצים עוד רגע של עושה עוד רגע לחייך כולם רואים שהם חיות של לילה כשהשמש יורדת הם מתחילים לצאת עוד אחד דברים רוקדים למעלה רוצים עוד רגע של עושה היום כולנו מחפשים להשתייך ואיך זה מתהפך כשכל המוח מתלכלך ופתאום אתה לא זוכר בכלל לאן אתה הולך אומרים שהבנות הכי יפות תמיד הכי לבד ושכולנו רק עופים שמתעטפים בבד בתוך ענן שמטשטש חושים מרגיש נחמד וכמה מפתה לזרוק את העולם לצד מחפשים מפלט, מחפשים לברוח, מחפשים לצאת עולם שלם של הסחות לדעת, מכורים לחטא ואם לא בא לך להרגיש, אל תחשבי בכלל לא להיות כבד, הפך פתאום למה זה קל אז נאבד את הראש הלילה ותראי שהאורות למעלה מבטיחים שתנצחי אופוריה מרימה אותך רק עד שתצנחי הרגע הוא עכשיו, אבל הלילה הוא נצחי, אז אל תדאגי כשהשמש יורדת הם מתחילים לצאת עוד מסתנברים רוקדים למעלה רוצים עוד רגע של עושר, עוד רגע לחייך כולם רואים שהם חיות של לילה רק 
שכחת אחרונה, רק עוד שתי דקות הם לא רוצים להתעורר, הם רוצים לחיות רק עוד רגע אחרון, רק עוד טעימה רק עוד כוס, רק עוד שעות, רק עוד לגימה רק עוד רגע אחרון, עוד שנייה אחת אל תיקח מהם את זה, רק תיתן עוד קצת הם לא רוצים לגדול, לא רוצים למות כי כשהבוקר יעלה הם יחזרו למציאות Okay, guys, so I have, I have to confess something or, and to the, my listeners, I'm sitting here jamming out, mouthing <laughs> the words only to the chorus. I'm not going to lie to my listeners. I cannot, I am not at a place or where I could do your part. I don't know that rapping is a skill that I possess. Um, But I definitely was singing, though, at the end where it starts to, like, amp back up. up. Well, that part of yours I do know. And I might have just been mouthing those words, too. Careful. Well, Careful, I'm or I'm coming to the stage. I, I, I am glad that you like the song. I, 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 really, I really am. Well, I, I definitely, definitely like the song. Could you... Help our listeners, as we are on the Knowledge Network of CRS Radio here on Talk Israel, we don't just want to bring something cool to people. We want to, you know, make sure that they understand it. So if you were, if you were going to give a, a summary of, like, with a translation of this song or, you know, mm-hmm. what it's about, I mean, I think that people can feel it, you know, yeah. as, as, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's like it's amping up and then it's down and then it's up and, and it's just. How would you talk about this song? The, this song is called Hayot Shelayla, which uh, translates to Creatures of the Night. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it, ha- it, has, uh, it has a video clip on YouTube you can yes, watch. And, and a, a very good one. And <laughs> the song talks about, yeah, if I may say so myself, uh, <laughs> the, the, it talks about this, phenomenon among people, you know, mm. that people are willing to do whatever is necessary to escape their mental troubles. You know, people are willing to do whatever is necessary to feel, feel better, even if it comes at the price of not actually fixing anything about their life, just feeling better momentarily. So in that way, this, it, That carries us over to the whole creatures of the night concept because those people who are willing to do whatever just to feel better for this glimpse of a moment for 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 this short moment, mm. those people are creatures of the night because they go out at night and they search for a way to feel better without actually solving the mm. the, the problem. without facing their problems, because that takes courage, and that takes time, and that takes effort, and that is a very, very not pleasant, <laughs> like, you know, experience to go through facing right. your own demons, you right. can say. But if you are trying to find a quick, let's say, relief, a, a, a quick, like, satisfaction for mm. feeling better at the moment, Okay, then this escapism sort of thing, it's very tempting for you. And you are trying to lose yourself in that moment, in that experience, in that night, and in whatever distractions it, it offers you, you know? So the songs talk about, talks about that, about people wanting to lose themselves. in the night and whatever it offers them, but no, they know, they want to lose themselves knowing that it solves nothing. Ah. It, yeah, it's just, it's a bandage, but it's not, it's not really helping the wound. You know what I mean? And. Wow, that was a lot deeper than, yeah. than I, I was expecting there. So. I, I hope that, I mean, this I idea of this, I, 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 I think our listeners are well aware of this now. Um, so I have, I have a very big compliment for you. I was just messaged um, by my father 
And my father is very good, and he always supports, you know, and listens to the show. But my father said that he's like, while I see that you're you're mouthing the words, not that he can actually see me, um, he uh, <laughs> he goes, he's like, we are too. It's kind of catchy. We're <laughs> we're into it. We're into it. So um, you know, you're you're appealing to multi generations here, or and. Uh, <laughs> I kind of, um, you know, I, I think it is that kind of thing that it, it gets in your head. And and maybe it is part of the idea of that, you know, sometimes we do want to just escape from our own realities, even when it's not going to solve problems, because everyone kind of needs that as a, as a coping mechanism. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, definitely. yeah. And, and I, you know, your music is, is um, your music touches a lot of different areas of I'm trying to really I, you know I, I, I listen you're putting the pressure on me here or because you are as you keep saying if you don't say so yourself really killing it because you are serious and bringing it so um, feel free Thank to you. so, well you're very welcome sir feel free to jump in and correct me if I misspeak but I feel like you really you don't shy away from topics um, sometimes your songs are just fun and sometimes your songs are about like, yeah, I killed it. And, uh, you know, like, yeah, I really, you know, I, I, uh, I don't, I don't want to, the last song is a very important song, so I don't want to drop any information about that, but I want the listeners to, we're, we're saving that for the end. We're finishing strong, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, you, you have, you've touched upon some things in, in your music that people might, might be surprised at or think we're like wow that was excuse me for saying this but ballsy you know um because i know that you know we we will uh play some of these songs but you've you've done songs about a, a, a wide variety of topics like including suicide um domestic violence um just being victorious over something this idea of escapism um you know, you really, you're, you're all over the place, but yet your music is very cohesive. And um, this song, along with, I believe, almost every other song we're going to play today here on Talk Israel on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network, are all on your first album, Momentum. Yes. Um, why uh, did you title so it Momentum? So my album, Momentum, and uh, it's going to touch upon the thing you said about me being diverse and talking about multiple subjects. Uh, the album is called Momentum, and it's actually split into two sides. Uh, side A, produced by Yama Mitai, uh, which talks about, which has this theme of movement, of motivation, of energy, of mm. achieving your goals. Mm -hmm. And side B of the album, which is uh, produced by Eli Bismuth, which is more characterized as talking about the things that hold us back. Mm. The, th the things along the way that hold us back from achieving our goals, from achieving our maximum potential, uh, that are blocking our movement, you know, figuratively speaking. And those things are things within ourselves or things outside, like, in our society mm -hmm. that are holding us back from doing the movement of side A and achieving our goals. And the album is called Momentum because momentum is an energy that is generated by movement. And the album is called Momentum because the entire story of the album, the entire thing, that the, the entire theme of the album is movement, is achieving mm -hmm. movement, is reaching your goals. And it's movement in side A and things that are slowing you down, things that are blocking your movement, whether they are internal or external, mm -hmm. on side B. And the entire album is momentum because you are trying to generate, we are all, we are all trying to generate momentum and achieve our goals. And we don't want the things on side B to slow us down, hold us back, or stop us from achieving those goals. But, but yet... They are they are challenges. Yes, they are challenges yeah. worth talking about. Right, because if they, you don't acknowledge them, you can't face definitely. them. Right. 
if you don't acknowledge them, that's the entire point of the song Creatures of the Night, yeah. Lila, which we just played. Yeah. Because you do want to acknowledge those obstacles. You do want to acknowledge those things that are slowing you down. Right. By not acknowledging them, you are not overcoming them. But by acknowledging them, you are prone to a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. You are prone to a lot of adversity. You are, you are prone to a lot of hardship. And that is not easy either. So you have this energy within you. You have this will to move forward and to get what it, whatever it is you want to achieve your goals. But you also have, in my, in, in, on side B of the album, I shared my personal, you know, obstacles, mm. the things that I feel are slowing me down mm-hmm. from achieving my... And on side A, I explore this will, this energy that I feel within myself that drives me forward, that drives me to achieve whatever goals I set for myself. And the entire conflict of the album, the entire reason I uh, chose to, wait, to go with the whole side A and side B uh, idea is that those two are clashing with each other, but they are still existing in their own way. You know, you have those obstacles and that does not contradict the fact that you have that drive right. to achieve your goal. And, and almost, the fact that things are slowing you down doesn't change the fact that you are willing to overcome yeah, them, yeah. even though it's tough. Yeah. And I chose to go with a different musical producers for each side because each side has its own unique sound. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know? Yes. The, 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 the sound we chose to go with on side A, uh, the sound Yamamitai has on his songs, and we are going to listen to a couple of those. Mm-hmm. And it's more energetic, mm. you know, it has power in it. You, you hear the song, you can hear the energy, you can hear the, you, you can hear the rhythm. And they are fast-paced, and they talk about, you know, topics of motivation and movement. Mm. The songs on Side B, uh, produced by Eli Bismuth, they are more spiritual. Yeah. They, are, they, are, they are slower, and they are, you can say, it's packed with more emotion. Mm. And... And I wanted to give as clear a picture as I can give of myself. Mm, because mm. As, as people, we are not just funny. We are not just sad. We are not <laughs> just very much into our things. No, we are more complex than that. And as a person, I feel that I wanted to give out as many sides of myself, yeah. as many shades of very m- many aspects of myself, aspects that I truly believe all of us have, you know, and I couldn't give it out without this diversity, because if I chose to do only sad songs, then people would think, oh, that's a sad dude, but I'm not a sad <laughs> guy, you know, <laughs> not all of the time, but right. I can't always do this, you know, in your face, yeah, I'm the best kind of rap, because that's not all I am. Right. That's not all I think. That's not all I believe. I do have moments of self-doubt. I do have moments of adversity. I do have my own personal emotional struggles that I go with. Right. And not talking about that stuff, not only does it not help me get over it, right. it's presenting me as this one-dimensional person. Well, you're, you're definitely not one-dimensional, and you guys have heard it oh, here no. first, or is indeed human. He is acknowledging yeah. that he has all these different sides and all these different emotions. You know, I, I was thinking when, when our listeners had Eli last week and they learned a little from him, he talked about, you know, being in Jerusalem. And there's this, again, even within this very small geographic country, the people and the feeling and everything about these different areas, is, it's almost like the air is different. The, the feeling is different. The way people are living is so different. And I'm wondering if, is that like, you know, Ellie being in Jerusalem, like, and that spiritual part of it was probably a perfect match. I mean, I know that you and Ellie are very close and you and Yom are very close, you know, and I think it's, it's that's what, because all of you are pretty genuine people, which is why I think your music, all of the music that, that all of you are working on together is coming across so well. 
but it, it's almost perfect that you went with that spiritual part with Ellie, because I do believe there is something to that whole, the air in Jerusalem really making people more in touch with their emotions. And that's what I've heard from other artists. Too in, in yeah, Israel. People from, Jerusalem, people from Jerusalem and artists from Jerusalem that I know and rappers from Jerusalem that I know, they are connected with this cosmic energy in a way that mm. you can't really get, in a way that you can't really explain. They are very spiritual people and they have this vibe to them. They just, they, they deal with a whole different kind of truth, you mm. know? in the world and it's very inspiring to see and you can feel that on Ellie's production mm. but on the other hand on, on Yam's productions Yam is uh, a rapper and he does this uh, rapping style called uh, Grime right and Grime went worldwide from the UK mm-hmm. and there are people doing Grime all across the world and you can really feel on Yam's production mm-hmm. that he's doing something that is very modern you know, he's doing this thing. That's a good he's intro. He's doing this thing that is it's global, you know? You know, or I know that music is going to work for you, but you're you're almost very good at transitioning because I was actually going to try and say <laughs> to people, you know, we should listen to this other other song that you did with Yam, but um, but you, you're kind of like doing it for me. So thank you on that. Um, but I, I do oh, want to point, I, I do want to point one more thing out because we did talk to Ellie about that. And I know that other musicians and, and last week, again, we had Ellie and uh, Moria, uh, who you worked with Moria and there's a song on your album from with Moria on yeah. the B side, which is the emotional side, uh, which we will have the listeners here later too. But I, I'm wondering if like, I just, I want everyone to know that, that that's just something so, and I think that that was a lot of, there's, there's a lot of, what I'm sorry, what did you say? You're very deliberate and you're no joke or very serious about your music. And I, I think that that's clear in the fact that you have chosen, which may not be as uh, as well known of a practice or as common of a practice to work on one album with two distinct producers, but you have 10 songs. It's a large album. And you literally split it five and five. And I, I think yeah. that that's really great. And people can, you know, get all your music. If, if people are hearing some of these songs or, well, I mean, obviously they're going to want to because they are hearing them here. But when they're hearing them here, where could they find them on the streaming services? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, you can find me on YouTube. Um, where, wherever music streams, you can find my music. And I think, uh, you, you know, you, we are going to listen to some songs here from the album, mm-hmm. but if you truly want the full experience, in my humble opinion, you need to listen to the whole thing, like start to finish, you know, because there's a, gen, a journey going on, you know? So to, to listen to the whole album. Yeah, start yeah. to finish. But but let's go with the next song. Okay. So you you wanted to transition to what? To the, the, the We're gonna have Yom? yeah, we're gonna have the, the song of you and Yam and the to translate yeah. the title for people would be like fuel and go. Yes. Okay, so I, I almost don't wanna say anything too much. Let let's just go ahead and, and hear this song. Nice. יש אנשים שמחפשים להתמקם, אני אף פעם לא אהיה אחד מהם אין לי שגרה, אין לי גבולות, אין לי תקרה, אין לי לוז אני עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז אז תבינו כי יש אנשים שמחפשים לעצור, אני רוצה רק להמשיך ולחפור אין לי תוכנית, אין לי זמן, אין לי ברקס, אין ריכוז עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז 
הם אומרים אולי את העץ, יואו, מגדל שלא יציב סופו להתמוטט, וואו. אבל אני לא מחכה עוד דקה, אני יודע מה שלי ואני לא רוצה לחרטט, בואו. נעצור ונירגע לשנייה, אולי בדרך שלי פספסתי פנייה. אבל עכשיו הגעתי עם הרעש לשכנים שלך, כאילו הם גרים ליד אתר בנייה. נו, אז מה הנהייה? את מי צריך לחטוף לפרסום? אז תאמרו שלא למדתי כלום. שיפרתי את הרמה שלי כשחצי מדינה ישבו בבית ושיפרו את המסך בזום, אז אני טס בבום, תעשה לי סאונד צ'ק ובום, אני עדיין בלי חוזה חתום. יש כאלה שחושבים איך לכבוש את המדינה, אני רוצה לקנות את היקום, אז קום. ותפנה את הכיסא, מנסה לא להתנסה, כמה שהרב שלי מכסח. יש לי מילים מקצה לקצה, מה הפלא שכמו ילד יחיד אני רוצה אח, אז שהטוב ינצח והפחות יפרגן, אני לא משהו בלהתבכיין. כי מי שלא עושה על מנת לשפר, אין לו זכות בכלל להתלונן. יש אנשים שמחפשים להתמקם, אני אף פעם לא אהיה אחד מהם. אין לי שגרה, אין לי גבולות, אין לי תקרה, אין לי לוז, אני עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז. אז תבינו כי יש אנשים שמחפשים לעצור, אני רוצה רק להמשיך ולחפור. אין לי תוכנית, אין לי זמן, אין לי ברקס, אין ריכוז. אני עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז, אין לי צועק לך בוז. וכל פעם שאתה עוצר על הכביש, על הצע כבר יש פקק. מיני ון טריילר, יאללה תקראו לי היידר. בואו נדפק, לא מורידים לי את הפיידר. לא משחק, בואו לא נשחק, סתום. פה נמאס ופה נשחק ובום, אתה כבר כלום. אחי, לאן נעלמו השנים? רק תדלקת ולא נסעת אף פעם. אף פעם לא מחפף על המייק, גם שקשה עושה כיף על המייק. מביא עוד ביט, דופק עוד ורס, בלה! PLF על המייק. אין לך קוט, תשיג זה לבד או שאין לך מה לצפות. כל אחד צריך לנהוג בעצמו, וביחד וואלה יוצרים אגדות. יש אנשים שמחפשים להתמקם, אני אף פעם לא אהיה אחד מהם. אין לי שגרה, אין לי גבולות, אין לי תקרה, אין לי לוז, אני עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז. אז תבינו כי יש אנשים שמחפשים לעצור, אני רוצה רק להמשיך ולחפור. אין לי תוכנית, אין לי זמן, אין לי ברקס, אין ריכוז. עצרתי לתדלק ולזוז. אז סיימת לדבר כבר? יופי. אל תטרח לענות. כי אני עובד על לבנות קריירה, אבל היי, לפחות אני מנסה לבנות. את הפרויקט תמה, בונה על מה שכבר בנוי, והמסלול של החיים שלך ממש צפוי. תן לי עשרים אנשים נורמטיביים, אני אוותר עליהם בשביל אחד פחות שפוי. זה הזמן, אז לאן מכאן? יאללה, בא לגן. גם ככה אני לא נרדם, על אוטומט, כי בנימה, תלביט ומלל אני שט, מוציא מילים עד שהמיקרופון מוציא עשן. לעצור זה אוברייט, תן לי רגע, תן לי שקט, ותראה איך שהשיט הזה יוצא טבעי. האלתור שלי יותר חזק ממה שהם כותבים, אז בוא תגיד לי. יש להם סיכוי מולי? זה לא משחק של יכולות והימורים ומזל, יש מוכרים לא מרשימים בכלל. אבל יש לי מקום ריק בין הכוכבים, נשמה, בגלל זה קוראים לזה חלל, אז תישאר אומלל, ותמשיך להאמין שאתה לא מתאים, אבל אני התחלתי לשחק. אני לא מפסיק לזוז, ואם ראית אותי, זה רק כי עצרתי לתדלק. So I, I'm guessing that everyone started to kind of like bounce around in their chairs a little bit more. And I'm feeling like that would be a great pump up song for the gym. Like, definitely. I just, that's the vibe. I kind of like, I was like, I kind of wanted to, to stand up and I don't know, like go run out and do something. I was, I, I felt fueled and I could go. <laughs> so <laughs> could you, Could you give us the the actual title in Hebrew? I, I, I gave the um, the translation before we gave the Hebrew title. I, I apologize there. Yeah, so the, the title in Hebrew is Letadlek Velazuz, which means uh, fuel and go. Mm-hmm. The song itself is song number two on the album. And I feel this is one of those songs that really captures an essence, you know? Mm-hmm. And this song really, truly captures the essence of side A of, of the album. And it has Yam Amitai rapping there, the, the guy who produced uh, side A of Momentum, and doing just a terrific job as a rapper as well as a producer. But not and as good about whole... faking an accent. Oh, no, no, my accent is, uh, truly, my accent is just, it's as good as the, as the shachuka when you eat, and you have just trina all over it. And uh, the, the whole point of the song, it, it uses this metaphor of stopping only to refuel and then keep, keep going, you know, mm. and never, never truly stopping, never truly pausing, never taking a, a, an actual break mm. and stopping whatever you're doing. Mm. The, the, the closest thing to a break you can take in this mindset is to fuel and go. Ah, to stop to fuel, yeah. right. Because you need to fuel yeah, to keep going. I only oh. stop to fuel. That, that's the, the entire theme of this song is I, I just stop to fuel and I'm gone. 
You know, it's I not like it. I'm stopping. It's not like I'm like rethinking my steps mm. or just stopping for the sake of stopping. No, if I stop, it's the fuel and go. There's never truly a, a pause. There's never truly a stop to this journey. And that's the, that's the mindset of this song, this energy, this perpetual motion forward mm. towards your, your goals without ever stopping. And the closest thing someone can see you doing, the closest thing to stopping to is fuel. stopping to, to fuel and go. Your car is never standing, you know? Right. You know, and, and, yeah. I want to put you on the spot here, Or for just a second because when we first met we ended up getting very sidetracked and talking about food and I thought to myself I would like to put you on the spot and say when I'm in Israel this summer I would like to just have this song on blasting in the car and can we do like a food journey together because you and I are both foodies, like nobody's business. Hence why you were kind enough to do my introduction talking about shakshuka and um, anyone who follows me on social media knows I am obsessed with making shakshuka. Like almost every week I make it a little differently, you know, sometimes spicier than others, but I'm thinking how awesome would this be to have this? I mean, I could see people putting this up, so, listeners, here on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network, Talk Israel is putting you all um, – I'm calling everybody out. I want people to have this song blasting and show us pictures of your favorite foods that you use to fuel your body because you do have to take care of your body and your mind to keep going, which is like the beauty of the two sides of your album talking about you have to acknowledge things to be able to keep going. But this song, which is like, yeah, let's get up and go, but you have to, you know, you got to fuel. So I'm thinking like we should have people going out there and fueling their bodies with their favorite foods yes. and tagging the hell out of us on this and showing us what is your favorite way to fuel and go. Yes. Definitely. Do it for the food. Do it for the food, people. I mean... Food, food is the best. It's one letter away from being just good, you know? Uh, <laughs> you, can't go wrong. you can't go wrong with food, man. Literally, in the alphabet, E-F-G, F-G, but also just you just put that letter out and it's good. So, okay, or because we are now talking about food and you and I both can get very easily sidetracked by food, but I want to acknowledge it so we can move on. Like, yeah. what would be your favorite dish that you can really kind of only get in Israel? Or or talk to me about something that, that's a dish that maybe people know about in other places or from somewhere else, but Israel has put its own spin on it. Okay. So this is a difficult question because we have a lot of very good food here in Israel. Oh, I know. Uh, I, I like to eat my oh, way through Israel. We have just top shelf food, you know, the, the, everything here is just great. And it's hard to say something that is specific, but I can say this. Every time I've tried shawarma in a different country, mm. it, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it wow, just, just don't hold back there, Or. It just sucked in comparison to what we got here. You know, okay. now, unless you're in Turkey, which the Turkish people do like the, the best shawarma in the world, mm -hmm. Unless you're there, okay. you should come here and try our shawarma because I'm telling you, I've been around, okay? I've been around, and every time, a lot of places in Europe, they sell shawarma, and every shawarma I tasted... You're like, why am I eating joke. this? <laughs> it's just a joke, okay? So, I am telling you, I am putting my reputation on the line. Israel, you heard it here first, shawarma. everybody. Israel has better shawarma than almost any other place in the world, okay? Okay, so can you explain what shawarma is to people who may not know? It's hard to explain, mostly because I don't think I have the vocabulary for that. Okay, shawarma is, I can it's, help it's, you. It's, it's sliced, sort of, it, it's not really minced, but it's sliced, very thick sliced meat. Mm -hmm. It can be either... It can
can be beef, it can be chicken. Or lamb it can sometimes. Be yep. It can be lamb. Mm-hmm. And it's sliced in a way that gives it a very unique texture and mm-hmm. flavor. Yes, and it's because, also like it's like roasted around, you know, it's yes, like cooking so, and cooking, and so there's that. But there, it, I'm glad that you pointed out it's not just how it's cooked; it's like how it's it's kind of prepared to be served. Yeah. When I was 16, I used to be the guy that cuts shawarma. When I was 16, that was my job during high school. Okay. So they give you this small buzz saw and this big ass knife, and you have. <laughs> You have this gigantic, just stacks of meat stacks on each other, stacked on each other on a pike that's spinning around in this giant oven, and you slice it like uh, lost the wall there up to down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's you a, your hand it. motion is mo- is moving up and down. Yep. Yeah. So you got you, you go up and down with the saw, and then you you have slices, very small slices that fit inside of a pita bread mm-hmm. or a lava bread or yeah. yes, and it's just the best. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is something unique. This is something special. You you don't see a lot of those like in other countries. And if you are in Israel and you are a meat lover. This is definitely an authentic experience you want yes. to to enjoy. And, okay. And it's not just the meat in itself; it's all the accoutrements that go along with it. Like you said, there's a lot of different ways to eat it: pita, lapa, baguette, whatever. But there's all these different vegetables and sauces, and you know, the ways Israel in which. Is all in. Let me tell you this: Israel is all in on sauce on, on <laughs> sauces. I've recently <laughs> been to Europe. And when you go to Europe and you take something to eat, they give you two packets of like ketchup. And if you ask for more, it's extra pay. In Israel, if you ask for more, they give you a handful. Just take it. Yeah, they're like, you, know, you need the sauce. We, we, they want you want you dripping in sauce. sauce. They're, they're... Everything is is everything has sauce here. Everything has a side dish. Yeah, I, I, I'm I thinking to myself that um, when my son goes, because he, he's a big sauce on the side kind of person, <laughs> he's going to be like, they're going to look at him like he's got three heads. Um, and it's it's really funny because, you know, I think, you know, the nice thing about shawarma, too, is it's it's an accessible thing. It's it's almost like a street food. You can get it in a restaurant or kind of like on these, like, yes. you know, things. And it's, it's one of those great things that's available late at night, too, because um, – that sure does soak up, you know, a late night out. <laughs> but um, it's I, also cheap. Uh, Karen, it can, can. Oh my God, I just said like can. Yes, it is, and it's relatively expensive, and it's something that you could like walk and eat because it's it's like a handheld, you know, sandwich. And I and I agree with you 100%. Um, I do I do eat a ton of shawarma because sometimes when I'm in Israel and I'm working so late, by the time I look up and realize it's like oh, okay. And I think the last trip. I think that I had shawarma like three or four nights in a row. And I think I had chicken every time just because I was like, eh, the chicken's good. I'll go with the chicken. Like I wasn't ready to the, branch the out. Yeah. But um, I, I want to kind of, I'm just thinking, you know, or I, I would really love to do this. So again, I, I, I'm i putting this out here on Talk Israel on the CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. I, I am tasking people with, I want you to go out and take a shot of what you're eating or where you're eating, you know, feel free to shout out your favorite, you know, local eatery. doesn't have to be in Israel. And tell us how you're fueling and going. And um, I, I would love to see them. So please tag me at, you know, um, think, uh, think uh, underscore differently. Underscore, Anya, uh, oh, my gosh. Anya underscore think underscore differently is my Instagram. You can find me at Talk Israel. You can um, tag Or, and Or and I will definitely share them if you forget to tag one of us. But I want to, I'm also thinking, or as we're doing this, you know, driving around the car, blasting the song, I would love to kind of um, have this on. We would probably have to do it a little softer, but I mean, I love all the shooks in Israel because you can get everything and anything in these open air markets. But the one in Israel is, is still my favorite because I have to go and get figs. Because the fruits and vegetables and everything is so incredibly fresh in Israel. And 
the the bread is baked fresh. I and even though I eat a ton of things that you know one shouldn't because they're not the healthiest, like the bakery, the, all the rugula and the babka and stuff, I I still I still don't get you know it doesn't get to me because it's so fresh. But I would love to kind of have that song on and and walk through the shook because you know we could start we could get fresh juice we could pick up some fruits and veggies we could pick up some baked goods we could stop and have a beer we could then go to the you know the halva king and then we can go and buy you know all sorts of stuff and then we can hit like head back around um and do desserts. Sounds like do, a tool to me. I mean, I'm thinking right right here and right now with our listeners, we are going to have, if you guys are interested, hit us up, or I'm going to put you on the spot again. Would you be willing to commit to this this summer if uh, any of our listeners want to join us in Israel, because I will be there this summer, um, that we will do an official walk through of the Shook in Jerusalem playing uh, the Fuel and Go song, and, and we can just, you know, eat our way through. Yeah, is this is this something I can uh, get you to go ahead and say absolutely to? <laughs> this sounds awesome. Okay, perfect, perfect. Nothing like a good old amount of uh, pressure on someone to get them to say yes. But <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I I mean I'm just thinking that's just such a great idea. So let's let's go ahead and do it. Um, but you know I think. There's so many there's so many things to to say about Israel and, and like you said there there's almost like the extreme and I feel like food is another one of those things like I feel like Israel takes certain items and, and takes them to a whole other level you know I I stopped in um, a restaurant in Ashdod and this apparently I mean unbeknownst to me I just kind of was like I need to eat and this places close to the hotel that I was at. Um, I was there for a night working on a project and Ashdod is beautiful. It's a coastal area in, in central Israel. Um, it is just south of Tel Aviv, correct? Or am I? Um, but Pes- yeah. in this place was called, is called Pescado. And I went in and I'm like looking at the menu and um, of course they, they do have menus in English too. And I'm looking around and everyone's eating these extravagant looking things. And I was like, well, I'm not really, really hungry. So I thought I'll just get two small appetizers. And I asked the, you know, the bartender who's staying at the bar, are two like appetizers that going to be good? He's like, oh yeah. Now I wasn't thinking, and it, I don't know, if, how do, I don't know how to describe this accurately to the listeners, but in a lot of restaurants, when you sit down in Israel, automatically stuff comes to the table. And if you weren't rest, used to it, you'd be like, oh, I didn't order this, but these little like, um, like little salad type things come out. There's often like cucumbers or an Israeli salad, uh, hummus. Um, trying to think of what else, like sometimes just comes out and you're like, oh, whoa, okay, great. So I'm already munching on something with some fresh bread. And and then uh, they they brought out a ceviche. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just great. And you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I had ordered a, a sort of ceviche, but this was a kosher place, so there's no shellfish. And I think when a lot of people think of ceviche, they think of shrimp or um, shrimp and scallops, and I'm trying to think of what else might be in there, uh, you know, like from, from Spain or something. But this was all like white fish, you know, uh, white yeah. types of fish. And, and I don't know the, you know, the names, because different kinds of fish, which are, you know, similar in taste and texture, uh, don't live in every single region, but this, it was absolutely gorgeous to look at. And the taste was so beyond out of this world that I actually, you know, I had said to him, I'm like, I, excuse me, I'm so sorry, but I'm here doing this project. And I just, do you mind if I take pictures? Because this was just amazing. And of course, they're like, why are you even asking? Just do it. You know, like, that's the Israeli mentality. You just do, you just do, you don't have to ask. And the chef came out and we started speaking and it turned out like he had just gotten back from some sort of like international competition, 50 restaurants in the world were chosen. And he came in in the top half of the top 50 restaurants in the world. And you would never like know this place if you didn't go to Ashdod. Like, have you heard of Pescado? 
Yes, I have okay. heard of, of the shadow. It's 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 a uh, it's a known one if you are into restaurants. Yeah. But Ashdod, Ashdod generally is not very tourist heavy. You know, people right. who come to Israel they usually go like to Tel Aviv or mm. to Jerusalem or maybe they visit the north or Elat. But mm. Ashdod doesn't get the the enough love. You know. On the tourist front, right? I and mean, you can you can very easily miss out on restaurants like that because Ashdod is southern than Tel Aviv. It's on the coast mm. of 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 Israel, and you can very easily miss it. Yeah, and, it's a, it's, a, uh, and it's a large port city, which is another thing that people it, may not know. Um, Israel has several ports. But Ashdod and Haifa are the two main ones. Obviously, Tel Aviv has a port and Eilat and everything else. But Ashdod, it's like I did not realize until I was there how large the port was. Um, but, I mean, part of me wants to tell everyone about Ashdod, and part of me doesn't really because I like that it's not full of a lot of tourists. So when I go, it's it's really nice. It's, um, it's a very it's, – I mean, it's, it has all of the beauty – of the beaches of, you know, what people think of Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv does a wonderful job, the city of Tel Aviv, yeah. who's ever in charge of that, of promoting their beaches. Um, good job, whoever is in charge of that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and throw down and say that I had just equally as beautiful time at the beach in Ashdod. Definitely. It's a, very, it's a growing city the last years and it's getting more and more like appreciation and it's good yeah. to see that. Yeah. It's good to see that. Yeah. I mean, man, if I had some money, I'd invested in Ashdod since it's growing. So, um, but you know, I know that we talked about places and a few things. And before we we talk about anything else, I I know that you know you you talked about growing up in Central Israel and Petah Tikva, but um, I know that you happen to not be at home now, and you were kind enough to to you know call into the show from because we mentioned it the the beautiful city of Eilat. Yes, I am in Eilat currently, the, 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 the southernmost southern yep. point in Israel. It is the yes, most the southern, southern tip of Israel. Israel. Yes, um, and Eilat is known for the water. Snorkeling is very, very popular in Eilat. Um, so if you are going yes. to do that, please enjoy. Um, people from Eilat, you can also just, it's like a hop, skip, and a jump to some other countries. And some other countries that now... Um, you know, over over the history have not always had open borders, but um, from a lot, you can now um, go ahead and just hop over the border and and visit a whole other country, uh, yeah. <laughs> which is which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, and then, of course, in, my favorite thing to do in a lot is uh, to go to the a lot stone factory. Um, but you know, I think most of my listeners know this, and anyone who follows me on social media, um, I am I am all about Israeli silver. And I wear a lot of it. Um, and since you've met me in person, you, you could attest to that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm personally trying to bring the, the thumb ring look back doing it. But uh, currently I have on one, two, no, just two items from the Elad Stone factory. Um, you know, I mean, I'd be more than happy if they wanted to send me stuff, but <laughs> I don't know that that's how it works, but. I do, I do like it because a lot stone is is such a unique and beautiful stone that you you can't find anywhere else in the world, and I think that that's so cool. Um, so if you have time, you should you should go check it out. So I wanted to see if you know we've 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 been in um, you know escapism. We've fueled mm-hmm. and go, gone with you. But if I'm looking at the other side of the album to transition back to some of those things that we need, you know, um, I'm just thinking maybe what we should do is have our listeners hear the song that you did with Moria because they did, they did meet her last week. Um, but again, I don't want to give anything away about the song. I want to go ahead and put it on for everyone. And, uh, and then, you know, we can talk about it. But I think that you're going to hear, again, like you said, this spiritual thing. Now, again, another compliment coming your way, courtesy of Mr. Mr. Mark Farber, my father. 
I'm going to say his full name today on the show. Um, and he, he actually had a question for you. So um, my dad is, is the, now the king of texting. Okay. And uh, so I, I want to, I want to read this to you or because I don't want to mess up his question. So he asked if you knew if there was a musician or a person out there who feels that there is, the Kabbalistic influence of, you know, the, uh, the idea of, you know, Tzvat, a, a very small city in Israel, is known as the city of mysticism, and Kabbalah, and many study people, uh, many people study Kabbalah, and, and just, you know, this, these ideas of mysticism and, and these, you know, deep thought and things like that. So he wanted to know if you, you had any knowledge of that kind of an influence. And if the answer is no, you can go ahead and say no. Don't feel like you have to come up with something. Mark can wait. Me, well, me personally, uh, I have actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, a lot of rappers that are influenced by Judaism and Kabbalah in, in specifically. And you can feel this influence. They took it to a more philosophical side. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the, the spiritual philosophy in their, in their like, text, you know? Mm -hmm. And it is pretty impressive because... Rap has this way of being very informative, mm. okay? But it's very informative because you are not constrained into certain, like, melodies mm -hmm. that, that you have to do, and you can be very informative with words, you know? And that is a great way of getting through information and messages. And I had the, the privilege of coming into contact with several rappers who actually transfer through their lyrics very deep, like, ideas, very, very deep, like, emotions, very deep philosophical mm. concepts. And several of those actually had their roots in the, in the whole Kabbalah wow. uh, culture, yeah. So that is uh, pretty interesting because hip-hop in general has this way of getting through information yes, from yes. whatever source you want because it's very heavy on the lyrics. You know, you can have a lot of lyrics and you can fit a lot of words into a three-minute song, let's say, yeah. okay? And you can fit more words in hip-hop and rap than you can do in rock or pop. Sure, you're, you're yeah. talking like a mile a minute sometimes in a rap song. It's very fast. Well, and so that allows, it, it gives you the, the privilege mm. to get over whatever message that you want with more lyrics and more words, and it gives you the freedom to really get your idea over. I, and I love that. It ties into to the song with Moya, in which I had a very deep message that I wanted to talk upon, to touch upon, yeah. and I did it in this song. And uh, I, I, I think I can talk about it and elaborate after we listen to it. Yeah, I agree with you. So you guys heard it here first on Talk Israel. So thank you, Mark Barber, for that very pointed question. Um, but you heard it here first on Talk Israel on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. So without further ado, let's listen to Reflection. <laughs> אני אף פעם לא מרגיש כמו מישהו. תמיד יותר נמוך מהרוב, לא משנה מה עשיתי. אני אף פעם לא מספיק טוב. נכי המבקר העצמי, מתי גם אני אדע את הערך שלי? אין איך לברוח מזה, הבריון שלי חי בתוכי. מ-0 ל-100 ב-0 שניות. כשהאוזן שומעת, השקט, הראש מחפש בעיות. בגלל זה אני רץ מדבר לדבר, מעביר את החיים בנסיעה. הלב לא בבית כרגע, מוזמן להשאיר הודעה. אני לא מחפש לי צרות. אבל רגע לבד ופתאום כמו קסם, עוד חמש נוצרות, מעמיס על עצמי ביקורות, וזה לא משנה מה תיתן לי, אף אחד לא יותר קשה איתי ממני, זה קטע דפוק, אני תמיד רק עסוק באותם הדברים שעוד אין לי. Thank you. 
קוראת לי לבטל. זה השד הפנימי שלי. הוא יוצר גיהנום בנשמה. זה חישות שאתה שומע בגב של הראש, זה הקול ששובר את הדממה. הוא אומר. נו, תמשיך לברוח להומור ולמחות. אני לא שומע מישהו צוחק. זה כל מה שיש לך לתת להם. אתה כלום מבפנים, אתה ריק. אתה לא ראוי לאהבה, אבל מה אין לך באמת חברים? לכל מי שמסביבך לא אכפת ממך. אם הם אומרים לך הפוך, הם שקרים. כן זה כן, אז נפנה את האמת רק כי היא נכונה. כי היית לבד עד עכשיו ועדיין זה לא השתנה. עדיף לך ככה בינינו. לא ללבד, תאמץ את הבדידות, יש לך אותי, אתה לא צריך אף אחד, אני איתך עד היום שתמות, האמת רעיון לא רע, אולי תעשה לעולם טובה, בוא תסיים את זה כאן ועכשיו, כי נכון אתה חי, אבל אין לך למה. Um, I have to to admit that I have heard the song many times because um, I, I've listened to you and to Moria. But every time I hear the song, like I I I I. I just like, I hear the pain and her voice and the pleading and the like, you know, she's, 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 she's desperately, you know, uh, relaying and, 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 and how you sound in this song is so different, you know, from the other songs yeah. you feel. And like you said, even though you're talking really fast and, and rapping is like a form of, of, of talking, you're not quite, you know, she, when you're singing, she's, you know, she's stretching out her words, but, You know, you're you're still going fast, and you're just like, oh, wow. I mean, it's it's very emotional. Um, it is. It is. Even without the, knowing the, the content. Um, yeah, the 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 song itself it has a very unique concept because it's called reflection, it's the foot, and it talks about you know it's from uh, the B side of the album, meaning mm. it talks about. Uh, An obstacle in our way right and the obstacle and and each song inside me actually talks about a different obstacle that you have to get over that you have to go through of course if you want to achieve your goals and this one it talks about our self criticism in a way that is unhealthy not yeah. in the self aware way that wants you to get better right but in this way that puts you down and all you always makes you feel bad about yourself and the way we chose to do it is by having the entire second verse like it's it's read by me but with this effect on my voice and it's mm. the, the it's the self-doubt mm. talking like to me you know the entire second verse the entire second like uh, the, the entire second verse of the song is Is my personal you can say like doubtful voice my mm. like my uh, personal torment or okay my inner voice that tells me that yeah. I'm not good enough right that, that voice talking to me oh. and oh. the last verse is me trying to overcome it and right. Moya is doing just a terrific walk with the chorus mm. to this song and you You know the the lyrics themselves the the lyrics to the chorus it's uh, uh, 
translates to, if tomorrow I won't be here anymore, will oh. there be anyone to remember? Oh, God. And that's something that so many people in society struggle with, this inner doubt and, and you know, the, the, the amount of, especially young people. I feel like this song would be so amazing for young people to hear because a lot of them are really struggling with self-harm and, and suicide um, is, is higher than it's been in so many years. And, and this idea of like, oh, I'm, I'm not worth anything and, and I'm not like these other people. It's so, it's so powerful, the message of this song. Yes, uh, I, I really identify with it. And it's something that's been very important for me to talk about in this album and generally in, in a song mm. because I personally feel not, that not only me, but a lot of people that I know, okay, but also me, we have this thing, this voice inside of ourselves that's always putting us down. Right. That always makes us feel bad about what we're doing. Mm. That always makes us question ourselves that feeling that you're never good enough and you can't really succeed if you have this voice being so dominant within yourself. But you can't truly get rid of it because it is a part of who you are. And by hating this voice, you are hating a part of yourself. And the thing that I'm trying to preach in the, the, the last verse of the song is learning to accept that these thoughts, these voices, they are a part of who we are. And mm. even though we don't like them, we need to learn to accept them as, for what they are. They are a part of ourselves. And we need to learn to accept them and live alongside them because mm. you can't get rid of a part of yourself. You can't do it because then you won't be complete as a person. Right. But you can't let this part of yourself dictate to you how you live because then you'll suffer right. and you'll spiral down. You have to find your balance in which you learn to live with these parts of yourself that are less less viable. appealing. Yeah, and not beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to say, you know, here on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network, um, Talk Israel is is here with you, or Georgie, and I don't know that. Uh, if if you had said to me, well, how, how you know, what do you think you guys are going to talk about? I did not think that we would be able to share so much knowledge here on the Knowledge Network, and and I do think it's it it is crucial because, you know, you you do have to, like you said, you know, really live through your emotions instead of denying them. If you if you pretend that they're not there, right? You you go to escape. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, you can't you can't listen to them all the time and let them overtake you. But you do have to, like, acknowledge that there are, you know, different emotions, different aspects, different parts of our personality, different times in life where it's okay to feel a certain way. Um, but know that, like, this too shall pass, right? Your highs are only high because you've had lows. And I think that this, this idea of the, the reality of the balance in life is so beautifully um, portrayed on this album but I kind of want to, on that note, I'd like to, to finish up our time, and then um, I have a special treat for the listeners uh, at the end of our show, kind of on a high note with you. Now, there is a song that is on this album that I did play on Talk Israel's first episode a few weeks ago. When I know which one. Okay, I'm glad. Well, I hope you know you wrote it. <laughs> but I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. So I liked it so much. Um, and I think the first time I heard it, I think it was that day at the bowl of rehearsal that I was, we were sitting and talking. I, I think it was you and I and Ellie and maybe oh so beautiful Soma. I mean, I feel like we haven't talked about his looks in so long. I mean, it's been like, you know, an hour. We haven't told everyone how beautiful he is. Um, and I, I do mean that genuinely, guys. Like, it's really funny. I swear they all, all of the other rappers say this about him. Um, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're, you're from the U.S. I have a song called Home Run. 
And I, I started laughing at you like, yeah, yeah, right. And you're like, no, really? Because, you know, and so you started like selling it to me. And and then you got up on stage and performed it. And I I actually think this is on that live. And you, I believe you jump into the picture and you're like, this is the one, this is the one. And I'm like, and I just kind of like look back at like, yeah, guys, that was for real. Clearly not, you know, I did not know you were going to do that. And um, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool and so catchy. And so I played it for Peter Kurz, the general manager of Team Israel. And he's like, love it. And I know that you guys are getting in contact about performing it because I want to drop yet another piece of knowledge here on the CRS radio, the Knowledge Network on Talk Israel. Um, there is indeed Israel. In Israel, there is baseball. There is baseball. Even though I keep saying this to all the Israelis, they're like, baseball, what is this baseball? I don't do your accent very well. But anyway, I'm like, no, there's baseball. And not for nothing, they held their own in the World Baseball Classic. They were put into the death pool. They still held they their own. Did. They qualified for the 2026 World Baseball Classic. So, uh, how about them apples? See, I used your, yeah. your, your, you know, your, your expression there. And on top yeah. of it, Israel is hosting the European Classic in uh, 2025, which is going to be huge. And I'm really excited about it. So, you know, I'm happy to talk about baseball in Israel anytime, but I think there's no better way to kind of wrap up our time with you than to have this song come on and have you, you know, tell everyone a little bit about it. So I'm going to play it now and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, go ahead and, you know, tell everyone all they need to know about home run. <laughs> Oh, that was funny, hit it. Ah. I'll take a swing at it. מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הזדמנויות לא מגיעות פעמיים, בוא נוותר על השריקת פתיחה. אנשים כבר כותבים את הפרקים של הסיפור שלהם, אני עדיין מעצב כריכה. אני לא ממהר לקטלג את עצמי, שואף גבוה לפעמים אני הורג את עצמי, אבל תראה שיהיה ביום יפה עולם כזה שבו אני עולה על ביפה מהנג את עצמי. מילים טסות בכסף סופרסוני גם עם גילו ריטלין, אתה לא מרוכז כמוני, זה נראה לי פרואטי, הם אומנים בספגטי, כי לידי הם ברמה של ציורי מקרוני, אז מכאן אל הבנק, בא עם טנק ומסור ענק, בא לי ג'אנק פוד על הרב כי זה צ'יפ. זוכף להם פתקים כי אני קוטל אותם, אז תגיד לי אתה מי אביב. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הנה הרגע מגיע, תשים הביט ליציע, 12 רמות מעל מה שהכי טוב הציע. באים המלל לבועט, משאיר את המיקרופון לועט, אני מרים את העט, חודר להם לראש כמו קליע, מתחילים להזיע זד, כאן נותן פעם, שורף טעם, טעם מלחם זה וול דאן. יושב על המלל ומסובב את התמל שמסרב לקבל איזשהו מת כבר. זה ברור שאני בא מפתח תקווה. לידי אתה רמת גן, ממאית השנייה שיהיה המלחץ על הפליי, לא נשאר לך הרבה זמן. אני עושה כאן היסטוריה, אתה זמר בתיאוריה, תן כבוד כמו ליורם, גאון על הטראק, אז תביא את המחבט כי מה שג'ורג'י בא לתת, יעשו כולם את הראש מחוץ לפארק. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. הום רן, מי מוכן לתת את המכה בכל זמן? אני חיכיתי בנחת, אני קראתי את התחת, מוציא את הכדור מהמגרש. I love that you added the little uh, announcer part at the end, but um, I, I should have had that song on yesterday because my son went to go practice his swing, and um, we, we started talking about this because my son is a, a baseball player, and uh, the machines weren't working, and he said, Mom, can you do soft talk to me? And I was like, oh, dear God, no, 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 no. Um, because he's very 
strong and hits the ball very, very hard. And I have, you know, a love of life and don't want to be injured or smacked in the face by a baseball. So um, I could have been playing that song, but I think the if someone had recorded me doing this, it would make it to the show. They, I don't know if they have a, an equivalent in Israel, but it's called like America's Funniest Home Videos because I would toss the ball and crouch so quickly behind the, uh, it's called an L screen, and literally crunch all the way down to the ground that I ended up doing squats for like a half an hour because I would toss the ball and then squat. And um, maybe my son was listening to your song because at one point he actually hit the L screen and I just looked at him like, I will hurt you. I was so, my heart was racing. I, I was sweating. I, I, fe- I felt like I was pitching in a major league game because I was terrified. <laughs> I was so terrified. That, that so, like a really scary thing. So, well, yeah, I know. I'm, and, you know, hopefully, you know, Bizarat Hashem, when he's in Israel, I know he's going to be there with a, a program. Maybe, maybe he'll have free time and, and he can meet you. But um, tell us about Home Run and, and why you wrote it and why you chose to write about the best sport ever, baseball. Mm-hmm. I just upset well, a lot of people in other countries. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Uh, well, this song talks about, like, it's it's the song that sum, sum, sums up side A, and it's right before you get into side B. Mm. And it's this pinnacle of this victorious, sensation you know what i mean Mm. when you feel like you're on the at the top of your game and it's there to sum up everything that we you've been through with side a this whole Mm. wanting to achieve and this whole movement uh uh, theme and this energetic vibe and it's that it's there to sum it up as this way of saying you need to know to celebrate you, your achievements. You yeah. need to know to celebrate your victories. And this song does exactly that. That song, is, it's, it's a big flex, you know what I mean? It's saying that I can knock things out of the park at any time yeah. because I've worked hard for the, the, the privilege to do so, you know? Lama and, low, Lama low. Why not, everybody? Ignore. Sometimes. Acknowledge you need to give yourself some props, you know? Right. And in, in hip-hop, it's nothing new. Uh, rappers have been doing that for a long, long time. And the, the way you, that you hype yourself up. Mm. But I chose to go with baseball, which is the, the most popular sport in Israel currently is, is soccer, is football. Well, for now, but I'm, I'm going to try to do everything I can to make it baseball. And so, if Peter, if you're listening with Team Israel – or you guys want to know more about Team Israel, because Orr is a big Team Israel fan. Um, and I know you're going to be doing some something with them soon, but we can't quite talk about it yet because it's not we're, – we're a little too far away. But, I mean, it's an amazing sport. It's a thinking sport. And I love that you're saying you have to acknowledge your victories because there is so much thought and there is planning. And, and just as you have to acknowledge your lows so you can get over them, you should stop and enjoy these victories because you deserve it, Dagnabbit. Definitely. And I chose to go with this home run metaphor for this song with knocking things out of the park yeah. because it's so it's such a definitive metaphor for Oh winning. yeah. There's a sound you know I mean? there's a sound to when a home run is hit, you yeah. know it. You the crack of the bat. There is nothing in this world like song, it. Throughout the, throughout the entire song we actually sampled that sound. You can oh I love it. I love it. Yeah. You can hear it as a part yes. of the beat. You can hear yes. it. Yes. You know? So tell us, did it did it hype you up when you were in the studio and you would hear that little, you know, that crack of the bat? Definitely. Definitely yeah. Because it gets over this idea of winning in such a total way. Oh, yeah. People stand up the minute they hear that sound at a ballpark because everyone wants to see it sail out of the park or into the bleachers or, you know, whatever the case may be, out of the, you know, outfield. It's, it's, it's very, it is, it's, there's, it's like, it's like time stops for a second. One swing. Exactly. You know, that, 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 it only takes one. It's one 
Rock Echad for everybody. Only one. Rock Echad. And, and doing this one swing gives you such a, a – it's sort a of it's a small victory. You yeah. Know, it's a small victory. But an important one. Game. Yeah, I I yeah, love I love one. that. I love that. And I hope our listeners I took that to my personal metaphor of doing like if you give something your best shot, mm-hmm. then you win. Yeah. And it's your victim. Right. And you can score a whole right. run at every time. Every time you're up at the plate you have this potential to hit a home run. And Same. Same thing about shows, yeah. same thing about songs, yeah. same thing about radio interviews. You need to knock it out of the park every time. <laughs> or, that was amazing. You know what I'm going to give you for that, Or? Imale! I've been dying to try to use that expression. I can't. I really can't get it, but I think that might have been a good time. Yeah, that, that, that was a good thing. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to work in that into my vocabulary. I just, I can't... Um, I can't quite get it. Uh, one of the other terms that, you know, and I always like to drop knowledge because we are on CRS Radio, the Knowledge Network. You know, here on Talk is where we like to, to drop some knowledge. You know, when you're frustrated, and like you said, everything in Israel is, is sometimes very extreme. There's two ways of telling people, like, enough or stop. Like, must speak, like, enough, okay, right? That's when the kid's like, ma, 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 ma. But then when it's been like, ma, 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 too many times, like, you might hear someone yell, die. And and someone who speaks English as their, you know, native language, I, I'm like, I can't yell that. I just can't say that because, I, I mean, I know if I'm speaking Hebrew, I'm not physically literally telling someone to die. Like, I hope you die. I hope you stop living. No, it's like, die, enough. Like, that's it. I've had it. I'm at the end of my rope. Um, and it's just, it's such a funny expression that I, I can't get over. Aval, aval. Aval, or I, I cannot believe that we have gone through an entire uh, show and I have not said the word aval like 10 times because my listeners know that is my favorite, favorite word. Well, you just did. You just did. <laughs> I know. So I would like to, you know, um, kind of finish with you and, and we're going to leave the listeners with a, a couple things um, towards the end of our program. But I'm just hoping since you knocked it out of the park um if you wouldn't mind just taking one more one more uh turn around in the batter's box you know because in a baseball game there are nine innings and you potentially could hit more than one home run can you well i won't hit you because then you get a free base but i will i will i will i will pitch you this ball straight over the plate i believe that I have heard whispers amongst some of the people that you work with in the music industry that you might indeed have a second album coming soon. Yeah. Can you confirm this here on Talk Israel on CRS the Knowledge CRS Radio the Knowledge Network that you are indeed coming out with some new music? And please, please tell me it's soon. Second album is in the works. <clears throat> Uh, it's it's going to be uh, high on the concept, like the first one. Uh, different concept, this uh, though. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, because you know how these things go, mm-hmm. and it's not totally up to me, but hopefully we will release the second album by the, this summer. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, if you want, I, I just think it would be a great idea because I know that Talk Israel would be more than happy to cover that live when I'm in Israel. Would you be willing to come on the program and, and go ahead and drop that, that date when it's coming? Definitely, definitely. All I right, guys. Know it much because there is a lot of work to be done. But they heard it here first. Looking- all right, so get to work already, Or, because we at Talk Israel are waiting for this album to drop. Now, we started the program off with talking about how funny you were, and I thought it would be only perfect to wrap up the, the program. I'm going to put a little song on in the background, and, and we're going to have a little conversation. So, Or, let's, this is an opportunity for our listeners to hear how funny you are, because you are quite together. 
which is another word to say man and you know in Hebrew but I do like to call myself the top Isha and I just feel like this song is just all about fun and how everyone is and speaking of fun people I have to give a quick shout out to a very good friend of mine Kobe, who is listening either from Israel or possibly from New Jersey because I believe he was going to be with his family for Passover. But he is a wonderful friend who volunteers with the ambulance program, which we are going to talk about on another Talk Israel program. But I just want to share this with people because I am Anisha. I am a woman. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, right? I, I need to find <laughs> And I feel like I have probably opened this way too wide for you to separate into and very possibly, in addition to being funny, make fun of me. But for my listeners, oh, I know that my future, my my man here is in Israel. I I I understand. It's not the right time at the moment. That's okay. That will come. But or, if I think I find him, I might put you on the mission of doing like the, you know, getting the info, I'm making sure. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. We did no, not no, say no, that. No, we no, did no, not no, say no. that here on Talk Israel. No, no. no. <laughs> we are not kidnapping anyone. No, no. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you kidnap him and interrogate him. (laughs) All right. Well, um, we definitely, no one has been harmed. No, I feel like with the disclosure, no animals have been harmed in the process of making this show. Uh, No, no one is going to be kidnapped. No, no, not at all. I mean, you know, what, what Orr did or didn't do in the Army, maybe he was an interrogation specialist. I don't know. He's very clearly good with talking. I mean, maybe he also has skills of, like, you know, his talking is very scary and intimidating. I don't know. Maybe maybe you have a sidekick, you know, a, a partner in crime that you're going to, like, interrogate with. I, I don't know. I mean, listen, sometimes, you know, there's just you're better off. In, in the land of ignorance, and I'm, I think I'm going to li- live in that land as far as, uh, you know, knowing what's going on with that. But, you know, Efo, Efo Hagever, Shelly. Where are you, sir? I would like to meet you. Um, <laughs> but I am so happy that you joined us. I am even happier to hear this album is coming out, but I'm the most, most happy that, in addition to, I really feel like hitting a home run with this music or uh, on the whole entire album of momentum that we are going to be able to speak to you. And and we don't have to wait till the summer here at Talk Israel to talk to you again, um, but we will be talking to you the summer live and hopefully doing some sort of launch party. That would be super fun. Um, but before we kind of, you know, uh, go out, I'm just wondering, or is there anything else? that you want to make sure um, people know about you, that you felt like you didn't get across, you've, you've been holding on to some joke the whole time we've been talking, just waiting for the right time. I don't want to take your your funny away from you. I mean, you are kind of the king of dad jokes without being a dad. Um, oh, come on. That's, 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 <laughs> just, that's just too kind. Uh, I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear what's on your mind. Oh! Um, <laughs> Yeah. You've been hanging on to that one for a while, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely was. Uh, for whoever uh, wants to find me and whatever and whatever I'm up to, you can find me on Instagram. I'm very, very active there. On the oh, Georgie, that's O-R uh, underscore O-G-O-R-G-I. Mm-hmm. And every song you heard today is on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Tidal, and where, wherever you can find music streaming. It's been fun. It's been fun on you. Yes, and you guys can search up his music in both English and in Hebrew. And if you are getting stuck trying to figure out what the name of anything is, um, you guys can hit me up directly, Anya underscore think underscore differently on Instagram, Anya Farber on Facebook, also on CRS Radio Talk Israel on Facebook group. 
because I am happy if you don't have a Hebrew keyboard to type something in for you and send it to you so you can copy and paste it. If you want to search for something, though, you can find them in English, um, though I don't think all of the songs are necessarily translated. Or maybe we can have you put up a list of the translated uh, you know, names for the songs in case they're, they're trying to find them. But, um, you know, please, you know, follow or on Instagram, his stories are hilarious. Even if you don't understand what he's saying, his facial expressions on his stories are, are worth the watch, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and children of all ages, because, or you are <laughs> like one of the most transparent people um, in your story process. So I, I have to say, please keep that up because I, I personally find it very entertaining. Um, so please enjoy a lot and um, pass over some mayach, hug some mayach to you and your family and all of your friends. Uh, please tell all the Bola people I said, hey, and oh, and of course, I think we've gone another 15 minutes without talking about how beautiful, beautiful Soma is. Um, and I feel like, you know, people are going to definitely start looking up Soma on Instagram and trying to figure out who this guy is who's so beautiful. But, um, you know, and, and hit Or up and, and he might tell you all about him and Soma's bromance. I, you know, it's possible. Um, so thank you so, so, so much. Um, and I am going to be sharing with our listeners more stuff about you and more exciting stuff that we have, you know, lined up on Talk Israel. Nice. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Great, great. So thank you so much. So here on Talk Israel on CRS Radio, the Talk uh, Network, I do want to officially very, very, very much thank Or for joining us. And I want to let you guys know, um, next week, I am actually, I'm so excited to have this information to share with you. Next week, I am going to be speaking with Ilana Fish, and she is amazing, amazing. She's an amazing, amazing Isha. Isha Tova Ma'od Ma'od Ma'od. She is an amazing woman. And she is going to be joining me on the new show that we have. And it is called Zionistas, and it will be debuting after Passover. And I could not be more excited about it because it is going to be all about Israeli fashion, every as aspect of fashion, every single aspect. We're going to be talking about shoes. We're going to be talking about jewelry because we know that I cannot possibly not talk about Israeli silver because I love it and I literally am always adorned in it. We're going to be talking about clothes, head coverings, hats, the origin of things that have been started in Israel and our show, Zionistas, where we talk everything about Israeli fashion, will indeed debut Passover. And we will be welcoming um, designers and all sorts of people involved in the fashion industry. We're going to be bringing you history. We're going to be talking about crossover. We're going to be talking about so much stuff, and you are going to have just an amazing time. And that show is going to be on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I just can't wait because it's going to be so much fun, and we're just going to have a great time, and we will put tons and tons and tons of fun in the and we are going to hear all this amazing thing about anything and everything fashion. So Alana is amazing. She has so much info, and her and I are just going to talk with you guys and and share with you and do all of the fun things that, you know, we can do in Israel. And we'll talk about shopping because I love to go shopping in Israel. It is so much fun. And, um, you know, it'll just be all those good things. So that is coming up. Talk Israel will be coming to you again next Monday at our new time of 3 p.m. here on CRS Radio the Knowledge Network. And I want to just leave you with a few good thoughts. Um, I'm very excited about what's going on. And Passover is our holiday that is starting very soon. And Passover is a time of, you know, reflection and, you know, you're with your family and friends and sitting around and, and, and really kind of acknowledging these, the tribulations and some of the painful moments um, that the Jews have endured. And it's the journey 
where we end in Israel. And I think that there's not a more beautiful way to think about that than, you know, to, to, to just really take a moment and, and just think about all the things that we have to go through. And sometimes how life can be very painful. And Or spoke about that so beautifully um, with us today. And I just want to leave you with one of my other favorite artists, Mr. Nissen Black, and the song Motherland Bounce, all about the beautiful, beautiful motherland of Israel. This place is a dope. We are royalty. We must go back to our place in Kiswana. Those of coming to America with Eddie no. Murphy, this part of the we song are is a little right soup here. on that. In his video, this it is absolutely is hilarious. So, you guys, check that out. Missing Black Motherland. <laughs> The rainy city where my mom lived In Jerusalem, that golden city that was conquered But still we moving onward Motherland conquest Smell me like an armpit Yeah, yeah We gon' play it loud and till it's till it Yeah, yeah We gon' blow the roof up off the building Yeah, yeah We gon' play that motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce We yeah. baba My mama told me that I read good Been on my straight and narrow But my history is v hood Thank God today that we could Buy a box of Cheerios or kicks. I can even buy tricks. I'm no longer on wick. EBT car rip in my passport lip. Sent like a notary from every country that I went. Ain't a country like this from the others you've been sent. Black is beautiful. This gon' be the motherland hit. Yeah. Yeah. We gon' play it loud and to the chili. Yeah. Yeah. We gon' blow the roof up off the building. Yeah. Yeah. We gon' play that motherland bounce. Check it out now, motherland bounce. Check it out now, motherland bounce. We baba. Yeah. yeah.